Writing is such a lonely process. Like sharing helps me to feel less lonely as I'm as I'm doing this. And it helps me to be accountable as well. So that's one of the reasons why I do it. Even though I know that the story is going to change so much. So much. So I think from now on, when I share, I'm going to need to make that disclaimer ahead of time. And I need to be like less uh, trigger happy about like putting excerpts and things of that nature out there. Because it's just... It's not gonna be what ends up being published, so I think that's that's where I need to hold myself back. But 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 here's the story, and I want to share it with you all, so that way y'all understand it. And this is a video that I will continue to reference as I move forward with Under the Flamboyant Tree, a contemporary fiction novel with magical realism uh, undertones in it, and and that is that. This started as The Devil That Haunts Me, which was meant to be um, a book that covers the three women, La Doña, Julitza. Uh, La Doña is the crone, Julitza is the maiden, and Isabella slash Bianca, um, who is the mother. And, and I started that. I'm going through my Scrivener history, so that way, because I'm like, I need to tell people how this actually started. I started writing that on October 6, 2022. And yes, a long, long time ago. So see, so like books are a long thing for me just because it's, it takes a lot. And I'm a discovery writer. So I'm writing things and, and I'm discovering new things. And you're going to see that with the history right here that I'm going to give you. So I, I started October 6, 2022. And what started this was just a, a conversation with my therapist that had to do with childhood trauma that I had repressed for so long. And now that I'm 42, about to be 43, it's like I'm, I was finally uncovering that. But... Once again, I start writing as I'm uncovering it. And then it's like a big gap of no writing here. Because then uh, on November, I stop writing. And then I pick it back up again, March 25th, 2023. Um, just because writing is therapeutic, therapeutic. I can't even say that. It's como terapia, no? Pero también duele. You know, it also hurts, especially as I'm tapping into those scars and in that drama. So I, I had to when I first started writing the devil that haunts me, just just based off of uh, my scars, which I put on the character. Um, it, it was it was tough, and I needed to take a lot of breaks. And my therapist was like, "Yes, take all the breaks that you need," um, and, and so forth. And that's what I did. And and this version of it is very raw. It's very emotional. It's very strong. Um, it 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 will not be the published version, but it is the genesis of of this um, trilogy here. Uh, because like I said, then I pick it back up on March twenty fifth, twenty twenty three, and then I'm a little bit more consistent, right? Where I go March, April, May, June. 2023 all last year right and all of that and I, I and I take it I take it all throughout <laughs> I write this one all the way till March 2024 of this year and then I stop so I think I stop because I had sorted out most of that not all of it most of it. I don't think I'll even get close to sorting out everything just because it's painful. And I'm a big baby when it comes to pain. Uh, so March 2024, I kind of stopped because now I'm able to look at this more like a story, uh, a fictional story, because I'm able now to put distance in it um, as opposed to as a journaling method for me and I realized that it is missing some things it doesn't have that story factor that will grab the the reader so I know something is missing 
right? There's no outline involved at this time. <laughs> None whatsoever. It's just me writing, going through the things and, and, and writing. Um, so then on March 2024, I go ahead and do an outline. I'm still thinking this is about the three ladies. So then, um, oh, this is my mouse, people. Then I'm like, you know what? I have to, like, let the title reflect that this is about the three ladies. So March 29, 2024, I, I retitled this. I opened up a new script document, copy um, some of the things from the previous one, from The Devil That Haunts Me, into The Devil That Haunts Them. Um, because now the title reflects that this is not just about Julitza, but it's about the three women, that lineage that kind of held on to that, that hurt, that pain, and passed it on from one to the other. And and then I, I when I do discovery writing, writing and I, I go from one manuscript to another as I'm like molding this story, and in this case, changing titles, there's not a lot of words that I can bring over to the new manuscript. So I end up like, doing almost like I've said before a full rewrite uh, of the thing because it's just it's just a few like uh a thousand and four hundred and thirty words that I brought over <laughs> from from the previous one into this one because as I reframed the story in my head I was like okay so just just these thousand and some change words can come into this manuscript because it will make sense in this manuscript everything else would just stay in the other one What y'all to know what goes behind the scenes, okay? And uh, and I do that, and I do that until April. So I do this for a month, and it's like, I, w I was saying this before, it's like, you know, when the shoe just doesn't fit, or the outfit just doesn't jive, right? Or the hair do, like, this used to happen to me a lot in high school. I would do my hair, and it'll be like, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. And then I would just know. It's like, it's just, it's not it. I don't want it. I don't want it. It doesn't work. Um, so that's how I felt when it came to the devil that haunts them. It didn't take me very long to realize that that was not it either. Some, it's just, it's not clicking folks. And I don't know how to describe it other than it's just, it's not clicking. Um, it, it, but now, right, I have a little bit more distance from my scars, from my traumas. I've been able to, to talk about it somewhat, uh, with my therapist. I'm able to reflect on it through the writing that I've done. So, so really like the first year of me drafting what would become the trilogy, uh, of the devil that haunts them. And under the flamboyant tree, I was able to heal myself, not just through the writing, but mostly through, um, therapy sessions. And, um, from those therapy sessions, and I'm able to write a little bit more, um, because I'm healing and now I can talk about it or write about it, as I should say. Um, because when it when it's really painful and it's really fresh, I cannot talk about it or write about it. It's just, it just stays here until I'm able to process it. So that's what happened with this one. Then, right, now we're in April 2024. And I'm like... This is not, the, like, the ladies cannot stay in one book. That That's what I figured out. I was like, it, it's too much of a story. And I kept getting this image of, like, this big-ass book like this. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that to readers. I wouldn't want, I don't, I wouldn't want that to, you know, be done to me. And I'm like, I, I'm a big Octavia Butler fan and, the reason why I'm a big Octavia Butler fan is because the lady like was a genius when it came to writing a great story and keeping it like, you know, within like that perfect uh, page count. And every word in her novel counted. Every word meant something um, and, and drove the story forward. So lady knew what she was doing. So um, I very much lean into having more streamlined um, stories, more um, compact books, not those big ass books like this, uh, just because I want the readers to be able to assess my books and I want um, most readers to 
be able to enjoy it within the time constraints that they have in their own lives. So because of that, I knew that each character needed their own books. There's just no way that um, I was just going to put all three women in there because they had so much to say. Each character just had so much to say. So then I took over the mother story because that one was the one that just kept coming to the forefront. Like I was trying to write Julita's story all day long and, and, and it was just like the, the, the story, the writing will veer straight into um, Isabella and to Bianca's story right away. And then when I look back at what I was writing, it was mostly Isabella, mostly Bianca. So then um, that like triggers something in my head to pull that character aside and start writing their story first. Because now I understand that at that point, it was through her character that I was understanding the story the most. So I started her story first. And the title for that one is Under the Flamboyant Tree. And that's the one that I'm currently editing. I took a, a, a break, a work and post break on the manuscript. I drafted the manuscript, did light edits on Scrivener and uh, through Pro Writing Aid. And then I printed it out. So I have a binder now with the manuscript and I'm halfway through that. And, and then I will input those edits and then I will print it out again and do another, another edit like that because there's still some things that are missing in the story that should be there, gaps in there. Um, so that's where I'm at on, for Under the Flamboyant Tree, but this thing started in October, 2022. And my hope is for you all to read these stories, read the trilogy, uh, fall in love, respect the pain that is there, and um, feel less alone for your own pain that's in your heart. So I hope you all enjoy it. Now, stay tuned. It's coming out in November of this year. For real. <laughs>